This week on Council Bluffs News, moving forward, the Council Bluffs Community School District puts new policies into place after a tragic incident at one of its schools. Find out how they're handling the situation. Pink out. Council Bluffs turns pink for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. More on the event sponsored by Methodist Jenny Edmondson Hospital. Canines in costume. We have all the details for the Midlands Humane Society's annual fundraiser. And we take you inside this sanctuary for this month's Chamber Member Spotlight. That and more coming up on Council Bluffs News. Welcome to this week's Council Bluffs News. I'm Marie Zeitner. A deadly confrontation between two students at Abraham Lincoln High School September 25th leads the Council Bluffs Community School District to come up with new policies. Dr. Martha Bruckner talks with CBTV 17 about what the district is doing to move forward. A tragic incident at Abraham Lincoln High School spurs several events in Council Bluffs to help students cope with the death of a friend. Two young men got into a scuffle at Abraham Lincoln High School in the Commons area, um, and one ended up being pushed back and falling to the floor, and that injury resulted in his death. This didn't have to go this far. Let's take a moment of silence for Dakota. This candlelight vigil at Bayless Park on September 28th brings together friends and the community to remember 16-year-old Dakota Eskrit, the student who lost his life as a result of injuries sustained September 25th. Everyone here, as you can see, is so, so, so sad that this had to happen. Immediately following the accident, the Council Bluffs Community School District took action and set new policies into place against violence in its schools. We want all of our kids to be safe and all of our kids to have good futures. Superintendent of Council Bluffs Community School District, Dr. Martha Bruckner, says the district has been proactive to prevent situations like this. We tell kids you can't fight, and if somebody picks a fight with you, you're supposed to walk away and get help. Um, we do that every day, but in the anger of a moment, sometimes kids don't follow that advice. In this particular instance, not following that advice ended in tragedy. If anything, we all wish none of that would have ever happened. To help students and staff deal with what happened on the morning of September 25th, professionals are still on hand at Abraham Lincoln for counseling. This is a traumatic event and you don't get over it in hours or days or weeks. And so we immediately started to put in some new, some precautions to help them recover and we continue to work with them. And right now, I will not show my grieving to myself. I will help others. Dr. Bruckner says school policies against violence are always being updated to best protect students. We always are trying to work on it. We continue to work on it. We've had plans in the past, and we'll continue to have plans to try to address that in the future. The Council Bluffs Community School District thanks the staff and faculty at Abraham Lincoln for their professionalism, the Green Hills AEA for its counseling services, and the Council Bluffs Police Department for reassuring students' of safety at the school following the incident. Dr. Bruckner says it will take time, but with support from the community, they're trying to help everybody heal. Council Bluffs Public Works Department has been repairing rough parts on College Road since September 30th. The road from Canesville to Railroad Avenue has been a rugged route for years now, and although regular maintenance has occurred, hopes are this project serves as a more permanent solution. The city expects the work to be done and the road to be open to through traffic October 17th. With the recent announcement of new subdivisions in Council Bluffs, another is in the works near Bluffs Northway. Community Development Director Don Gross has more with this week's construction update. My name is Don Gross with the Community Development Department. Uh, as far as our development minute uh, for October 10th, 
Uh, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about Nash subdivision. Uh, this is a subdivision the city did on the corner of 24th and Nash Boulevard. It's actually where the old uh, Holiday Inn used to be, actually, and it turned into Ramada Inn, and then it turned into disrepair and vacant. Uh, but the city got title to that property. Uh, we received a grant some years ago. We tore it down. We subdivided it, put the street, the sewer, and water utilities, and it created 25 lots. We also had 23 uh, single-family lots, of which 17 we've sold. And of those 17 lots, 12 homes were either been constructed and sold to others, uh, or they're in a the stage of construction. Now, half of the homes are uh, assisted homes for uh, new first-time buyers, where the city provides some down payment assistance along with a, a mortgage. Um, we have six single-family lots left. Uh, we hope to get those disposed of here in the next six months to a year. Now to news around the bluffs. Shaped by the hair company Hair Salon, 22 years of operation, appointments by phone at 323-6686. One of the largest craft shows in the metro attracts roughly 7,000 people October 11th and 12th. 200 vendors from around the Midwest fill up the Mid-America Center, showing everything from clothes and accessories to fall decor. They have to make what they're selling. That's the big claim to fame for this show. You can't be buying something and then just coming in and reselling it. You, if you buy something wholesale, you have to change it and transform it into something that you've made it into. With the change of seasons, pumpkins and leaves are popular themes. The Tom Callahan Craft Show will return to the Mid-America Center December 6th and 7th with its Christmas show. Classic cars take over the historic 100 block October 11th. With a showcase of 91 different makes and models, the inaugural Iowa Route 6 Classic Car Show is a big hit. We also had the Route 6 Tourism Group come through on the River to River Cruise, and they had over 100 cars as well. The cars are eligible to win trophies in different categories. Kim Elder's 1970 Chevelle SS received second place for the People's Choice Award and first place for Best of Show. I've cruised Broadway since I was 18 years old, and when I found out they had this car show coming, I was elated. With the large turnout, Bluffs Downtown plans on hosting the event again next year. Event coordinators are, however, considering moving to a bigger location. Coming up on Council Bluffs News, Council Bluffs turns pink for breast cancer awareness. See all the activities, and next, Mel Brink joins us in studio to talk about canines in costumes. We usually have at least 100 in costume, plus another 40 or 50 out of costume. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty. Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke fast. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. What does the world need? Iowa Western. The world is waiting. 
If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back to Council Bluffs News. I'm Marie Zeitner. Joining me in studio today is Mel Brink from the Midlands Humane Society. Thanks for being here, Mel. Thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. The Midlands Humane Society is having a new facility being built on Indian Hills Road. Can you tell me kind of the progress of that so far? They are moving very quickly. It's slated to open January 1. Okay, and um, they've been working on it all summer. Yes, um, the rain did delay them a little bit, but they've once they got the exterior done, the, the inside is going very quickly. And the, the board toured a week ago and they're very impressed with the interior, the use of space and natural light. It's gonna be really beautiful. And it does cost a lot of money, but the Midlands Humane Society hosts a bunch of fundraisers throughout the year. Go ahead and tell me the next one that's coming up. This Sunday, October 19th, from 2 to 4 in Bayless Park, we'll be holding Canines in Costume. I believe it's the sixth annual. And um, you can bring your dog in or out of costume, or if you don't have a dog, just come and people will dog watch. It's very entertaining. And you guys are going to have a bunch of kind of different activities for dogs and humans. <laughs> yes. Um, we've added some more human activities because the humans seem to participate quite a bit in the canine activities. Um, treats in a haystack, trick or treat, we'll have a costume parade, um, McGruff the crime dog will be there to lead the parade. We usually have at least 100 in costume plus another 40 or 50 out of costume. And what are some of the crazier costumes you've seen in recent years? A lot of flying monkeys. Um, we had one gentleman dress up as Little Red Riding Hood and uh, the, the Big Bad Wolf. He was the Big Bad Wolf and the dog was Little Red Riding Hood. That was really cute. So the dogs aren't the only people who are the only things I have to dress up, right? Correct. We will have entire families dress centered around the theme of the dog's costume. So it, it's really entertaining. Even if you're not an animal lover, it's, it's an entertaining event. And there's park benches everywhere to sit. Okay. When is it and where is it? It's Sunday, October 19th, this coming Sunday from 2 to 4 in Bayless Park. It's a free event. We'll, of course, have donation boxes everywhere. Um, they'll be, be doing paw painting. Um, we'll have a DJ. It's going to be a really nice family event, and hopefully the weather will hold out. Right. And you guys also have a website people can go to for more information and to donate? Yes, MidlandsHumaneSociety.org. Um, we have even photos of past events on there. All right. Thanks, Mel, for being here. Thank you so much. Stick around. More Council Bluffs news after the break. You wouldn't let money just blow out of your house. So when your AC or heater is on, make sure the doors, windows, and fireplace flue are shut tight. If you're headed out, turn down the AC or lower the heat by 10 degrees. And always keep your water heater set at 120. A little bit of common sense goes a long way. Get more great tips at energysaver.gov. It's not his new group of friends. It's not the video games. It's not the neighborhood. Mom, do I have to go to school today? The biggest threat to your child's future could be you. Every day they miss, even in middle school, puts their graduation at risk. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way.
At Council Bluff Savings Bank, our goal is to help you, your families, and your businesses grow and prosper for generations. We take pride in our community, whether it's volunteering our time or helping individuals, families, and businesses succeed. We provide you with the personal service and attention you deserve. With over 220 years of banking experience, decisions are made locally. We are Council Bluffs people operating at Council Bluffs Bank to help Council Bluffs be a better place to work and live. Council Bluffs Savings Bank, hometown banking, the way it used to be. Member FDIC. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and every year, Methodist Shedding Edmondson Hospital raises money to support research and treatments. October 10th and 11th, Council Bluffs turns pink for the occasion, and a few events help get the public involved. Breast cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death in women, so according to the CDC. We're making progress all the time in finding a cure. To raise awareness, Methodist Jenny Edmondson Hospital hosts a number of events in the city. It's our fourth year that we've been doing the um, citywide pink out. To start the two-day fundraiser, Mayor Matt Walsh reads a proclamation dedicating October 10th Methodist Jenny Edmondson Breast Health Day in Council Bluffs. In witness thereof, I have caused a signature in the official seal of the City of Council Bluffs, Iowa. Next is the Pink Up the Pace 5K Fun Run and One Mile Walk through downtown. Runners started on the 100 block and ended at Bayless Park. Participants wear pink from head to toe and some even take it to the next level. A lot of people in pink dressed up. I'm here to support those that they have loved, whether they're on the fight or that have um, on their journey for the cancer treatment. I'm the cancer survivor. Yeah. Hey. These ladies support their friend who has been cancer free for one year. My 50th birthday, I went in for my annual mammogram checkup and they called me back a few days later and said that they found a spot. I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Now they're here supporting the cause, which continues Saturday the 11th with a pub crawl on the 100 block of West Broadway. At each pub there is a different game to participate in. At 1892 Beer House, participants sport temporary tattoos for winning the game. It's called bra pong and you're throwing uh, pong, ping pong balls into each of the bra sizes. Above the running and games, Raising awareness for breast cancer is the reason these people are here. I am here to support my mom. She had breast cancer. It makes me want to bring awareness for the cause, um, just to let everybody know to do checks regularly because she was diagnosed at 38. Organizers of the Pink Out appreciate the generous support from everyone who is helping fight the deadly disease. A lot of people have been touched by breast cancer, and so it's a great opportunity to celebrate those that we know and love and help bring great awareness. A new addition this year, Pinker Size in the Park took place at Tom Hannafin River's Edge Park Saturday morning where people could do Zumba, yoga, jazzercise and more. Methodist Jenny Edmondson's goal for the pink out is $25,000. Vice President of Volunteer Services Tara Slevin says they've raised roughly 75% of that so far with more planned fundraising events to come. Still to come on Council Bluffs News. This carriage house allows you to get away and relax without electronics and social media in our chamber member spotlight. Plus, these pets are available for adoption at the Council Bluffs Animal Shelter. We'll be right back. You make me wear my bike helmet. You taught me never to run with scissors. And to follow the swimming rules. You tell me to stay away from drugs. To always buckle my seatbelt. So why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer? How safe is that? You ask them to follow some safety rules, now they're asking you. In fact, they're counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. Hey, going out like that? Yeah, why? Well, <laughs> what would the neighbors think? <laughs> Look what I have. Mr. Bird, remember? Bark, bark, bark. We're just playing. We're just playing. I'm trying to get you out of here. Even still. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you.
Schedule your campus visit today. Iowa Western, the world is waiting. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Time now for Pets of the Week. Hi, my name is Misty Bino and I'm a volunteer with Solus, support our local animal shelter. This little guy here has been called Jojo. He is about 10 months old, a Lhasa Apso mix. We dressed him up like a little monster for Halloween. He was found on the 2900 block of Bluff Street in Council Bluffs here. If you are interested in adopting Jojo, his file number is 1515. This little guy here is Nuka. Nuka is a Min Pin Terrier mix, they think. He is about two years old. He was just surrendered to the shelter because they took a dog where they weren't allowed to have dogs and had gotten caught. But they say he's lived with kids, cats, dogs. He is a little scared here in the shelter. Um, they also say that he's potty trained. If you are interested in adopting Nuka, his file number is 1567. This beautiful cream tabby here is Seamus. Seamus was uh, left in a home with his brother and we were able to go in and rescue them. He is such a sweetheart and just loves to cuddle. He's about a year and a half old and he's all dressed up for Halloween. If you are interested in adopting Seamus, his file number is 1479. This little monster is Grace. Grace is a nine week old kitten. She was found as a stray by the Burger King on Madison Avenue. She is a little torty, domestic short hair, and she is very friendly. They thought she was an unsocialized cat when they found her, and once she got to the shelter, she just cuddled right in. If you are interested in adopting Miss Grace, her file number is 1457. This is Huey. Huey is of Huey, Louie, Dewey, Donald, and Daisy. They were all surrendered to the shelter here and there are five sweet little hamsters just looking for forever homes. Their file numbers are 1538 through 1542. If you are interested in adopting a hamster or any of the pets you've seen here today, or if you are looking for an animal, come down to the Council Bluffs Animal Shelter at 2821 South 15th Street here in Council Bluffs. Now here's this month's Chamber Member Spotlight. Hi, I'm Bob Munt, President and CEO of the Council Bluffs Area Chamber of Commerce. Council Bluffs continues to enjoy a growing economy, new construction, new jobs, and an ever-improving quality of life. The Chamber, through its membership, is dedicated to ensure this growth continues. Here's a look at one of our many members. Hi, I'm Peg Christensen, and I'm the founder and president of Carriage House Rest. Carriage House Rest is a private, personal retreat spot um, nestled out in the rolling hills of Iowa. And it's meant for a personal, private retreat for anywhere from one to eight people. We furnished it and stocked it, and um, it's all ready to go. All you have to do is walk in with your pajamas and your, and your Bible or your journal and, and relax and rest. In my own spiritual journey in my life, um, I have learned the value of um, less is more sometimes, and getting away and having solitude and silence and quiet, uh, being unplugged from technology is a really great way to kind of recenter, hit the reset button internally so that you can um, think, have room to think, get your soul and your spirit kind of quieted and uh, being able to tune into God a little bit a little bit easier. Most people are at a place in their life where 
they crave alone time and they, they crave time alone with God. Not just being alone, but coming to a place that's intentional for meeting with God. Our website tells everything about the, the carriage house, the cost, all of the options, all the ideas for retreating, different, different types of retreats. And so they can go to the website, which is carriagehouserest.com, and find all the details and information about it. Council Bluffs Area Chamber of Commerce strives to provide programs and projects that benefit our membership. We have a variety of networking and marketing tools designed for members to make new business contacts and increase their bottom line. From after hours and ribbon cuttings to business recruitment, the Council Bluffs Area Chamber of Commerce is there. Stay tuned to CBTV 17 for more Chamber member spotlights. Time now for our weekly events calendar. The Second City, a comedy house out of Chicago, is celebrating laughs from the last 55 years. Check out the event Friday, October 17th from 8 to 10 p.m. in the Art Center at Iowa Western. Call 712-388-7140 for ticket information. Hitchcock Nature Center is having its annual Hawk Watch 5K trail run and watch this Saturday. Pre-registration is $25, day of event is $30. Call 712-741-6465 for more details. 3B Farms in Griswold, Iowa invites the public to Harvest Fest. This weekend, pick apples, take hay rack rides, eat food, and more. The Wedding Essentials Idea Show hits the Mid-America Center this Sunday. From 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., professionals will be on hand to help plan and inspire your wedding. New at Mount Crescent Ski Area is zip lining. You can ride on the weekends from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Cost is $25 for one trip or $40 for three slides down the line. Visit SkiCrescent.com for more details. Thanks for watching this week's Council Bluffs News. CBTV is always looking for your feedback. You can send questions, comments, or story ideas to cbtv at iwcc.edu. Call 712-325-3312 or find us on social media. We're on Facebook and Twitter. Just search CBTV17. Remember to keep it here for the latest scores and updates for local sports in your community by tuning in to the Bluff Sports Zone with J.J. Davis. For your Council Bluffs News, I'm Marie Zeitner. See you next week.